Hello, everybody, and welcome back into another episode of Between the Ears, kicking off a new week here on the show. I'm Scott Callen. That is Christopher Hall. As always, make sure to hit that subscribe button to know when we drop a new video, which is every Tuesday, Wednesday, and Sunday throughout football season. But to get it right when it drops, make sure you hit that subscribe button there. And you can follow us on Twitter, X. I'll still call it Twitter for eons, but uh, SI underscore WVU. And today... We are going to talk about the running game, the running backs, the offensive line, Garrett Green even a little bit, and how this year's team can still kind of have that same identity as what they had a year ago. And really that whole running back room as a whole, I don't know, Chris, that there's really been this much depth at this position in quite some time. I know there's still some uncertainties, you know, Jalen Anderson, you don't really know what you're going to get. The two freshmen, obviously, you'd like one of them to emerge, but they seem to have something there in those two guys as well. But you know what you have in Jaheim White and C.J. Donaldson. That's a pretty good starting point. Yeah, uh, and really with between those two, it's who has the hot hand that day, right? And I, I think a lot of times you can still use them as a one-two punch, kind of use C.J. to wear down the defenses and obviously Jaheim to run around the defense, so. Yeah, it was it was an interesting quote from uh, Neil Brown um, yesterday that mm-hmm. you know they don't really know who the third running back is. I think that's more of a push to Jalen because earlier uh, he he also said that Jalen has had taken some steps forward. Well, um, we know Jalen has has the capability to take make long runs. He's we've seen him do it. It's you know they've been preaching consistency the last two or three years. They're starting to find some consistency with the retention. Uh, being able to keep guys in the program and knowing what to expect. Um, so, yeah, I'd, I'd say that's more of a push to Jalen. Um, unfortunately, CJ has history, and albeit yeah, two years, true. but in college that he's been injured. Um, Jaheim got injured. So it, it's a it's a, it's a a been a position that takes its toll on the body. Um, you can expect guys probably to miss a game or two or here, and probably likely um, if you're if you're making that push to the Big 12 championship, and you're moving forward and you're looking forward if they win that Big 12 championship, it's going to be a really long year. If you make it to the Big 12 championship as 13 games, then even if you don't win it, as a 14th game. So all the runs, it's going, to, it's going to take a toll on everybody. We've talked about depth, and luckily this is one room that they have a lot of depth and they continue to find freshmen uh, that can make plays and really how much can they um, absorb uh, while in fall camp, when it comes to pass protection and you know going out in the flat for passes, just catching those is you know is an art in itself. Really, it kind of looks mundane, but uh, to catch the ball and, and get upfield, of course, a lot of that is on Gary Green as well to get the ball in the right spot. To catch the ball, get upfield, and miss that first tackle um, is a big part of the running game as well. It's an extension of the running game. You see that quick pass to the receivers, such as Rodney Gallagher. So, yeah, it, it's gonna it's you know another year. Where you went in last year, it was C.J. Donaldson, and I know there it was mainly C.J. Donaldson, but I felt like there was another running back in the mix that we Johnson, didn't. Justin Johnson. Yeah, Justin Johnson. Um, yeah. And we probably said at the time, hey, that's you know, that's a pretty big, deep running back room. What jump for this guy named <laughs> Why he was making plays in the in the We were right. So we just had the wrong them. people in there. <laughs> right. And prior to that, they had they moved C.J. to running back, and look what he did. So they keep finding guys. They're, they're finding guys. You know, they don't have to make a running back, I guess, this year. But, yeah, the depth keeps getting better because the guys that keep coming in keep making plays. Yeah, and hats off to Chad Scott because he's getting these guys ready to play year one. I mean, you just mentioned with C.J. I mean, he was a freaking tight end in high school <laughs> and they they just said one fall practice uh this kid might play running back and even he was kind of surprised by it he talked about it uh not that long ago i believe and he went and told his roommates that he was kind of surprised and it ended up working out for him now he's a full you know running back but i think too like you said like if you're gonna play deep into the season even if you don't even if you just played the 12 games in a bowl game the likelihood of you having the same two backs week in and week out in this grueling league, especially with this schedule, Neil Neil said it last week, like this is a very physical schedule that they're going to be playing. Penn State week one, we know Pitt, Pitt only won three games last year, but it, take the record aside, they like to play a physical brand of football. And then you get right into the thick of the things with the Big 12. All those teams that you play right out of the gate in the Big 12 are known to be physical teams in the trenches. So, you're not easing into this thing in the likelihood that you're going to only have 
CJ and Jaheim out there every single play is just very unlikely. So yeah, they, they're going to need a third, maybe even a fourth running back. I think that's the difference really with this year's team and, and teams pass is like you start getting into that third and fourth guy at, at running back or receiver you you're starting to find more answers there years past that really wasn't the case you you have a starter or your number two guy go down to either of those spots and you kind of hold your breath and just hope that something good happens or, or you, that you find another way to make up for it I don't know that's really the case here but you've got to find a way to to keep everybody happy I mean we know how it is nowadays with the transfer portal NIL touches early playing time I don't know that there's going to be that ego in this room. I haven't got that sense. I mean, when you talk about Jalen Anderson, I mean, he could have left this past offseason. He probably could have went and started somewhere, whether it be group of five or somewhere else. But he chose to stick it out and play here because he knows that there's going to be an opportunity for him to play. Jaheim White, C.J. Donaldson, I'm sure there's people hitting them up all offseason. They decided to stay here. And now it's about these these two freshman running backs, Dunbar and and uh, Hubbard, who may be in that same boat in a year or two from now. So, I th- I think the depth is is huge. It's a huge part of it because that's the thing that really separates the top of this league from the middle of the pack. And I mean, how many years have we talked about like Oklahoma State, for example? It's uh, quarterback goes down or they lose one to graduation. It's plug and play. Same thing with them at receiver. Same thing with them at running back. They just never take a step back. I don't know that West Virginia is getting quite there, but they're starting to close that gap a little bit. Yeah, for sure. And it really just goes back to how hard they work in recruiting, finding guys. I mean, there's guys that left uh, that could have potentially been fighting for playing time this year as well. So uh, really a lot of it when it comes to touches, if they do their job and make the plays they're supposed to do, they'll get more, right? Right. Keep the chains moving. It's going to add more plays for the offense. The ball will find yeah, the ball will definitely find you. So I don't think there's much of an ego. I think, you know, every competitor wants to um, play at a high level, stay on the field, give their team the best opportunity to win. Uh, but it just goes back to make the most of your opportunities. They preach it. You know, when the ball's in your hands, do something with it. You know, make a guy miss, get upfield, move the chains. You continue to move, you keep continuing to move the chains. Obviously, the offense stays on the field, and then you'll get another opportunity. So really, for them to get touched, it's not – they manage the touches. It's not the coaching yeah. staff. It's them. You make the play, you'll you'll get more you'll get more opportunities. So I, really with the I mean, it kind of extends from beyond the running back room. You don't really see a lot of ego. You're really seeing a lot of if we succeed, we all succeed. That uh, kind of mentality. So then, you know, it's easy to say in fall <laughs> when things are kind of good. No one's done anything yet. Haven't lost yet. I haven't. No feelings haven't been are hurt. On the field against anybody, um, but that really goes back to what they've talked about: culture and leadership uh, with this group, and it'll probably more likely be tested again this year. So, kind of, I, I think there's so much stability right now with the culture and with these guys that have been through it, uh, seen the opportunities that they've received uh, throughout their short career, and it's really just an extension, just. You see CJ, he, he looks better. You know, health is always going to be concerned when, you, when you've got injured two times in a year. But when you take care of yourself in the offseason, it, it tends to transfer into the into the season. So as long as he continues to take care of himself and prepare himself in the right way, and the same with Jaheim, um, really the, it's real, the options will be wide open for those two. But still, in the end, it goes back to there's going to be probably 13, 14 games. There's going to be plenty of opportunity where guys are going to need breaks, especially early in the year if it stays hot in Morgantown. Um, you know, going to Oklahoma State at one point early in the season, it's always pretty warm in Oklahoma still late in the year. So there'll be plenty of opportunities for these guys again, make plays. You'll stay on the field. Yeah, I mean, I'm just really interested to see how they go about the divisional labor because, I mean, obviously it's going to be a week to week thing. It'll probably be based on the opponent, who's got the hot hand, all that stuff. But, like, if you get to a point where, I mean, Jaheim is just cutting people up left and right, and CJ's kind of, you know, kind of struggling a little bit, or maybe he's just not getting those big chunk plays, are we going to see a point in time in the season where Jaheim kind of takes over as that that feature back, gets the most touches, and CJ's kind of more of a situational, you know, third down, short yardage, goal line back, 
are we going to get to that point or, or do you feel like this is going to be an even split throughout because I mean and the other part of it too is I, I don't know that there is a, a thousand yard rusher on this team especially when you factor in Garrett running the ball three or four running backs running the ball I, I don't know that they're going to have a thousand yard rusher yeah you can really go vice versa too right you could have CJ breaking tackles for big runs uh, and Jaheim struggling to get yeah. out in space. So it, it can Absolutely. really go either way. Both of these guys have potential to kind of take the reins and be that lead back. Um, and really, it's just a tough, like, it could be just managed week to week on who you play, on how those matchups. Can they take advantage of the linebacker out in the flat? How they're going to cover that? Um, that's really what's going to come down to. So when you, you know, they're really at the point right now where. Um, no, we're talking about running backs, but you can kind of look at it defensively too. We talked about it a week ago, and then Neil brought it up yesterday. It's really going to be about you now matchups. They they have the depth, and I think that's really what you're kind of going to look at in this running back room. How they match up against the linebackers? Is it a small linebacker room where you can pound to CJ? Can he take advantage of that, or is it going to be shifty Jaheim? So, I think you kind of go in with you know manage their skill sets, and then really whoever has the success, it goes back to just giving them the hot hand and goes again goes back consistency who's doing it week in week out and if one of them struggles yeah you know Jalen freshman yeah that could that could open the door for them to get more touches as well before we move to the o-line part of this I wanted to get a little bit more on those two freshmen we talked about them on the signing day show Dior Hubbard Trayvon Dunbar two kids that just ran right through everybody that they played through at their high schools and I mean, we said it on tape. Like I, I think when you, you and I were talking about this before we we taped that, we really couldn't figure out like which one of them was really better. I mean, they do different things, but they're both really good. And it's it's just weird to see you hit on two running backs in the same class. I, I mean, just from what I've seen on tape, the things I'm hearing from Deal, the things I'm hearing from Chats, it, that might be the case. Like they could have hit on both of these running backs and all of a sudden, boom, you've got five guys that you can trust. Yeah. Um, and it get, to them, it's how much can they absorb? I wouldn't be surprised if they both got touches on opening day, just to kind of get their feet wet, not necessarily that they're going to lean on them, but just to get them in. Depending you got on the four way, games maybe. too. So. Right. So it, I wouldn't be surprised, um, but I could probably see maybe one of them getting in. But, again, it's kind of have to see how that plays out. I know the staff always gets excited about freshmen when they're making plays, but can they do it within the offense um, and really be a cohesive, still be a cohesive group? Because the last thing you want to do is put a freshman in, right, and he runs to the wrong side, but you have two of your stars uh, sitting on the sidelines. So, or he just gets bullied uh, in pass protection. <laughs> I, I, I think what the good, th the good thing is, I don't, you know, unless they really prove it, I don't think they'll put them in that situation, and it kind of goes back to, you know, can you overthink it too much and really just kind of put yourself behind the sticks right off the bat? But um, really, I think you're just going to kind of you, – you don't think, you know, in the years past, even last year, that, hey, we may need to throw these guys out there a little early to kind of get their feet wet early in the season because we're going to have to depend on them this year. Whereas this season, it doesn't really feel – you don't have that feel that they need to do it. It would be yeah. like they can really earn their spot uh, up there. So. It's it's an interesting room. Uh, you you know, kind of with you, give a lot of credit to Coach Chad Scott and what he's done with these running backs. You think back to Letty Brown, how he improved uh, during his time, and you can kind of just go through these running backs, even the ones that transferred had a little bit of success uh, as they left, and just how he coaches them um, fundamentally so it works within the, their their offense. I think is really a testament of everybody in the stuff because I kind of all do that. But Chad is just really working wonders. Uh, and, you know, being co-offensive or the offensive coordinator, I guess, um, he gets he gets a lot of say on how the running game works. Uh, so he's always fighting As for his guy to get touches. Hey, and Chad Scott's out there running the drills, showing him the drills. He still got it out there. I'll, I'll die on the hill that he did not get enough touches on the North Carolina. He started getting, <laughs> getting towards the end of his career and was producing. I probably should have gave him some more touches early. Yeah, I mean, some of those runs that he's he's doing along the sidelines, I think one of these times he's going to catch up to C.J. Donalds. I don't know if he's going to catch yeah. up to Jaheim, but he's yeah. moving. He's booking on the sideline now. Um, but, yeah, I, I love the energy that he brings, just the passion. It seems like he's really relatable with the players. It seems like they just take really well to his coaching. He, Neil said it. 
he's a future head coach. And I think that's a great way to put it because not only the production, but the, the, the quickness and how he gets these guys game ready. Running back is a very tough position to get guys ready from out of high school. I don't think people really realize that. There's a lot that goes on there than more than just running the football, especially with pass protection and all that other stuff. And it seems like his guys, they may not be perfect in year one, but they can get enough of it to be able to handle the workload that they're given and then build on it in year two. So going to the offensive line part of this, we talked about this extensively on our, I think it was the first episode we did a couple of weeks or last week or whatever, fall camp um, report. With this offensive line, obviously no Zach Frazier, no Doug Nestor. Can this group still have that, you know, run first mentality to where they're just going to bully everybody in the run game, build off of it with the pass? Or are we going to see at some points in the season where, yeah, this this group's not, not quite as good as it was a year ago, and they're going to have to do some different things? I think – I'll stand by. I think they're going to be a better group. Um, better? Brandon okay. Yates, okay. Brandon Yates, is already, he's already kind of picking up where he left off um, and really showing toughness. Got banged up Friday, played throughout the scrimmage on Saturday. So, I mean, that's that's a little bit of Zach Frazier. Uh Reminiscent to Zach Frazier. Yeah, right there. So, um, now nah, this group's tough. Matt Moore coaches toughness. This is a deep group. Um, they're all pushing each other. You know, you got Watt Milam out there. If it wasn't for him, Johnny Williams would probably, would probably more, be starting at a lot of different places. Uh, so they're deep. I don't, you know, to me, this is like one of those areas where we've had to talk about it so much this year. You can really feel comfortable uh, with this group. Uh, they're going to be perfect. Absolutely not. But I think overall what they're going to be able to do with this group, um, I think it brings them more versatility in the run game. They'll be able to do different things and really be able to, when they scout a defense, be able to utilize all their tools. I don't, not that the last year's team was handcuffed, but I feel like this group is, a, is more athletic than last year's group. So they'll be able to really get out, uh, get to the second level and really be able to clear more path. They're bigger, they're stronger. So yeah, not worried about it. Nothing on those. I'll have to reiterate nothing on Zach Frazier or Doug Nestor. It's not them. It's just the evolution of this line and how they built it. So I have no concern uh, with this offensive line. I'm sure they will have their uh, bad moments without a doubt. But overall, I think this group will be just fine uh, winning the line of scrimmage in the run game. Yeah, I think that that athleticism is really going to benefit Jaheim. I mean, if you're going to get him outside – whether it's stretch or you're just out in the quick game, like that's that's going to be huge that he can have those guys pull and get out in front. And plus two, I mean, I know this is the running game episode kind of, but I mean, you're, you got receivers that are bigger, stronger, and Jaden Bray, Justin Robinson, the young kids have gotten better so that they can block more on the perimeter. And they were kind of willing and able blockers a year ago as freshmen. So you would expect that they would be able to help you out more in the run game too. So, yeah, um, Preston, cool. uh, Preston Fox. I mean, you got yeah. the West Virginia kids, Preston and Hudson. They'll fight for you out on the outside. So yeah, Cole Taylor's gotten better at blocking. So uh, you know, you know what you're getting yeah. in Trailing Davis. <laughs> he's yeah. gonna, he's gonna uh, hit somebody. Yeah. Cole Taylor becoming a better blocker really helps him as a receiver as well because that's just the decoy right there. It's just part of the chess match. And yeah, I, I have really. I think the one thing that you should be least concerned about is the running game. <laughs> like. <laughs> I think I think the running game will be good, um, and really what will have what will help the running game is a is a good passing game. Well, that's a good way to end it because that'll transition to our our next topic on tomorrow's episode. We're gonna probably talk a little bit about the running game again because we're gonna talk about the strengths and weaknesses of this 2024 West Virginia football team. So be sure to tune back in tomorrow right here on West Virginia on SI but on uh, Between the Ears. Make sure you hit the subscribe button. Give us a follow on X at SI underscore WVU. So that'll do it for us today. For Christopher Hall, I'm Scott Callan. We'll see you back here tomorrow morning.